Hi everyone, welcome to the Athlete Mondo podcast. Today I have for you another mix zone interview from the world indoors in Glasgow. My guest is Tiara von Gatzen, who made history in Glasgow by becoming the first world champion ever for Dominica. She won the triple jump final with a massive PB of 1501. The day after her friend Julian Alfred also made history, but for St. Lucia, by winning the Women's 60. I hope you enjoy this conversation. How does it feel to make history? Insane. <laughs> Just so insane. It kind of feels like a true like breath of fresh air. When you work at something and you set goals and you try to achieve it year in and year out to do it, you know, after two, only two competitions during the indoor season leading up to an Olympics, it feels so special. And any opportunity that Dominica just looks good in the media, that looks good, you know, on, on the world stage is a blessing, is a bonus. A lot of people assume you're from the Dominican Republic. But Wrong it's country. country. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so most of the people who will be listening are from France. And okay. Will you just tell me about... Guadeloupe and Martinique? Uh, yeah, so Dominique is between Martinique and Guadeloupe. Um, so if you know those islands, those are the clo- some of the closest ones. Um, Barbados and St. Lucia are also really, really close by. Shout out to Julian Alfred. Proud of you, girl. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So Lesser Antilles, Lesser English-speaking Antilles. Very small country, very tiny, but mighty and powerful people. And I'm very proud to be from there. So Dominica, not Dominican Republic. We don't speak Spanish. <laughs> So this is history for your country. This is also history for you, of course. First ever yeah. global medal. First yeah. time over 15 meters. Yeah. Did you know you had that jump in you? I think I knew I had that jump in me. I, But I, I kind of was like a bit preoccupied with wanting, like thinking about other things. Like I was like, okay, let's, you know, have a really good run. Uh, my knee's been bugging me a little bit, uh, well, a lot of bit in the last couple of weeks. And I was really nervous about that coming into the competition. I took some painkillers because of my knee and my body started feeling a little foggy. And so I told myself like, hey, you know, you don't feel exactly how you want to feel, but you've put in the work. It's already been logged in, you know, so you're still powerful. You might not feel it, but you're, you're still powerful. You still have the, the power, the explosive the explosiveness. And I will say that when I got out the pit, I thought it was only around 1480. You know, that's what I thought it was. Um, and I was really wondering, I was like, wow, these guys are taking a really long time to put the number up there. Mm-hmm. But if that's what the number is going to be, they can take as long as they want, you know. Uh, so it was a, a true pleasant surprise. And I'm also proud of myself for how easy that jump felt. So I'm really excited to see what's left in the tank. What did you have in mind before today's final? What was the goal? You know, the, the goal was 15 meters. I just didn't know I jumped it on that jump. Like I knew what to fix after my first jump. Okay. And I was ready to start working on jump after jump to get it right. But it happened on the second one. So I was like, oh, well, that box is checked. Let's just wait and see what happens. Yeah. You didn't do your final jump, did you? I did not. I was prepared just in case um, Hernandez uh, passed me because she had that 1490. But I didn't need to. So conserve energy. (laughs) Yeah. Did you dream about this gold medal? I did. You know, sometimes I always, I used to be a little superstitious and like, oh, you know, like, don't talk about it. Don't really think about it too much. You know, you don't want to jinx it. And then I realized that it's okay to be confident in knowing what your goals are and knowing what you want and going after what you want. And then after seeing Julian Alfred get her gold last night, I remember texting my husband and coach Aaron and I was like, I'm so proud of her. I was, I was crying watching her. Um, I was like, I'm so proud of her. But I want that moment for my country, too. You know, I want these small countries to have just that the huge magnifying glass on them and for the world to be cheering them on. They deserve it. Yeah. Um, they are amazing people. And I'm happy I could provide that for them today. How does it compare to what you thought it was going to be like winning a gold medal? <sighs> it was one of those things where you just kind of like, you, you kind of worry about it when you get there. Like, let me just get this jump together first. Mm-hmm. But I do think that I always wanted to hear like the round of applause from the crowd, like something like they, them knowing that something amazing happened and that victory lap, like it's like they could feel my happiness yeah. and it was just so beautiful. And so I, I did always dream about hearing that crowd cheer me on or that roar after something big and it happened. So, yeah. yeah. And the medal ceremony will be very special. <sighs> it is going to be really special. And hopefully I don't cry like a baby on the podium, but if it happens, so be it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening. I'll be back soon with another Mixed Zone interview from Glasgow.